Hey guys, what's up? Haru. The region of Netland is a place that's always been quite a mystery to us. We've only ever seen Netland in the Travail teaser, and everything that led up to the 5.0 trailer was barely scratching the surface of what Netland is actually about. So when Genshin Impact released the biggest bombshell trailer ever, it felt like the story and the lore of the game was elevated beyond just the main story quests. Netland's theme of war is one that is shrouded in a lot of mystery too. So for it to be partially explained in the special program is quite a surprise that I'm sure you want to know more about. A lot of words were thrown out with not a lot of context, so here I am explaining what the Night Kingdom is, how it relates to the Sacred Flame and ancient names of Nedlan, and basically how it's used to fend off the Abyss for thousands of years. Not to mention Mavuika and Capitano's fight looking like two slimes, or even dragons, trying to settle a score. I'll also cover everything from the special program, so if you're curious about things like how we gain power from the Wyobs, or the Statue of the Seven not offering Pyro to the MC, then this video should explain all of that and more. So without further ado, let's set our hearts ablaze, shall we? It's always exciting to piece together the new and official lore from a new region, and now we finally have Natland's official fire and war lore. These two concepts are intrinsically linked to the livelihoods of Natland, the ancient names, and their ongoing battle against the Abyss. In Natland, fire has evolved into an advanced form known only to the region as phlogiston or phlogiston. In real life, phlogiston was a theoretical element thought to exist in anything that could burn, which we now know as oxygen. In Honkai Star it's also found as a synthesis material, making phlogiston in Natland its own unique element. Interestingly, within the tournament held at the Stadium of the Sacred Flame, Logiston holds spiritual and religious significance. It's a living flame that symbolizes the fighting spirit of Natland's people. Many legendary heroes have passed on this fire to future generations, fueling them with their spirit and pushing them forward in their unending war. This sacred flame is also connected to the Night Kingdom through the activation of the Night Soul Blessing via phlogiston engravings. This ancient ritual in Natlan involves vision holders communing with the overseers of each tribe known as Wyobs. Now, these overseers who are considered tribal leaders have deep connections to the faith of each tribe and are likely tied to the ley lines and memories stored within Natlan, likely the Night Kingdom. The Wyab, roughly translated as way animals, also refers to shape-shifting creatures that harm others while sleeping, with ties to the Mayan underworld and packs with the devil. Theories surrounding figures like Columbina, Venti, and the Lecters might connect to the Wyobs, but that's a topic for another video. The first area that we'll be able to explore is the land of vibrant and flaming springs. This area's prominent villages will be part of the first three characters of Netlan, Molani, Kanich, and Kachina. The landscapes fitting each of their tribes are all equally unique and offer their own unique stories and lore, like the ancestral temple near Kanich's tribe, and even the active erupting volcano that seems to have its own sentient moving flame, possibly the bird of Mer Javari, or even Mavuika herself in her phoenix form. The various Saurians of Netlan utilize Phlogiston's different states, solid, liquid, and gas molecules to traverse the land in their own unique ways and even eat the fruits that are rich in phlogiston, a nation that is infused in their own fire as phlogiston is ever-present in various forms throughout Natlan. One such example is the Yunkasaur king that ate too many phlogiston fruits that you can take advantage of, as well as the cursed ancient gold flame Cucosaur that left its tribe long ago. Moving on, Phlogiston or Natlan's fire is not just a symbol. It's deeply connected to the concept of war and ancient names, which form the core of Natlan's identity as the nation of war. Throughout its history, Natlan has faced countless crises and calamities. But unlike other regions that slowly have been changed by war, humanity and Saurians in Natlan united against invaders from the abyss, with the fire of its heroes rising up and becoming legendary. These heroes have their deeds recorded as ancient names in Natlan's memories, and every tribe has obsidian pillars with the ancient names of their heroes carved into them. The obsidian pillars include the chronicles of past heroes where we can learn about the tribes' local legends and customs and the quests of playable characters as well, with each tribe's obsidian totem following a sort of motto or mantra of their heroes' deeds. Ancient names are more than just titles too. They're a cultural cornerstone where the deeds and spirits of the heroes are passed down through generations. And heroes who inherit these names take on not just the name, but also the role and legacy of the past. Two of the names are Otabiti from Kachina, 
reflecting her resilience, and Kinich, which is possibly Yupanqui, based on his Story Quest title, reflecting the quietness but also power of Yupanqui in the Unfinished Reverie artifact set. And if you play through the 4.8 Simulanka event quests, you'll notice the subtle hints about the power of names and the roles they play in Simulanka's past, present, and future. The pilgrimage of the Sacred Flame's return seems like an annual tournament held in Netland, not only to identify the strongest warriors and Saurians, but also to collect what's known as the Contending Flame. This implies that humans and dragons have been close allies and companions for thousands of years, working together to protect Netland. This ties directly to Netland's Phlogiston and Sacred Flame, a living flame where the spirits of past heroes are felt and fueled by the different contenders' views strategies, and personalities that align with historical figures. It's interesting to note that contenders are selected using the ball seen in the Ignition teaser, which might be sentient, choosing those it deems worthy to compete in the sacred tournament. Each contender's unique understanding of Natlan's concept of war and fire contributes to the contending flame that feeds the sacred flame, which in turn harbors Natlan's ancient heroes. This fire is crucial in keeping the ever-present threat of the Abyss at bay, and without the sacred flame, the Abyss would surely invade. Now considering that this is a living flame, it might suggest that the Pyro Dragon is somehow connected to it, possibly sealed within the primal sacred flame. If we look at Shbalanke, the speaker from Nubolet's drip marketing post, he might be the dragon of Natlan sealed within this flame. Now if we relate this to the Mayan hero twins, Shbalanke and Hunapu, it's also possible that a twin dragon remains alive in the form of the current Archon, Mavuika. It is said that it took the then Pyro Archon and the heroes of every tribe to defeat the Abyss. So perhaps Natlan has two sovereign twins with one sacrificing itself to become the Sacred Flames after fighting the Abyss long ago, while the other was left to keep their sibling's fire alive, and then maybe sacrificing herself to revive him. Speaking of Abyss, based on what sounds like Kinich in the trailer, the Abyss is also viewed as a rite of achievement. Those who triumph over the Abyss can earn the right to be revived. Resurrection of certain characters is a core experience in Natlan's story, highlighting Dainsliff's quote about the secrets of death and rebirth. In Natlan, the flames of heroes who carry the ancient names cannot easily be extinguished. However, the concept of sacrifice is pretty complex. Those who sacrifice themselves may continue to fight until the war is over, meaning that if they die, they could still forge onward. Kinich himself is likely an example, as Kuhul Ajao says that he literally cannot die. But this also means that their ancient name is destroyed, preventing its inheritance by the next generation. This suggests that even those who inherit the ancient names and fire of heroes might still fight after death, but they lose their ancient name once their war is over. As the saying goes, every great display of power comes at a price. Now this is very much a philosophical concept, but it underscores how war, death, rebirth, and fire are all tightly connected in Natlan's story and lore. Capitano's role in this is significant as well. He is deeply tied to Natlan's war and the reignition of Natlan's fire. This connection is the reason why he came to Natlan in the first place, but we'll dive into that a bit later. Now, the primary conflict of Natlan's story revolves around the Night Kingdom and Natlan's final year before the impending destruction. The Night Kingdom was first introduced in Kinichi's drip marketing post, and in 5.0 special program, we can infer that this mysterious place is exactly that. A realm or state within Natlan's geography where the boundaries of reality no longer apply and where literally anything can happen. Imagine the events in the chasm with the wonderful compass but with much greater significance. The Night Kingdom is a place where aberrants of the night return after being hunted down by the Saurian hunters. And Saurians aren't the only thing to worry about either. The Night Kingdom from what we can tell is where all the memories of Natlan are stored. Memories of its people, heroes, their ancient names, and their deeds. If the Abyss were to invade this location and read all of Natlan's memories, it would have the power to completely erase Natlan's past. Names within Tevat are a crucial definition of someone's identity and existence, and it's all related to your role and memories in the world of Tevat. So if the Abyss can tamper with that, then Natlan facing total destruction within a year 
is highly plausible. These memories are not just historical records either. They are the very essence of Natland's identity, as seen with the importance of ancient names and the sacred flame. The apparitions and ghosts that resemble Enkanomiya sinshades are likely the echoes of the past, carrying the ancient names of Natland's heroes. Whether this is a manifestation of the Night Kingdom itself or an alternate version of Natland created within it remains uncertain. There's also the abyss which might show how some places like Conria could look like. However, what's clear is that the Night Kingdom represents a memorial battleground, not just of physical strength, but of memory, identity, and survival. The two celestial nails present in the Night Kingdom might be closely related to the ancient Kingdom of Natland, often referred as the Ineffable City. According to legends from the Unfinished Reverie, a tyrant once unearthed the abyss and was forced to seal away the city behind a stone gate. This very stone gate might be the same one that Mavuika ventures into, where the abyss could have leaked in and where Shbalanke might be sealed. And the ignition teaser raises the possibility of forging a name, using the blood of dragons and humans as a sacrifice might be the only way to resolve this whole dilemma. In a place where boundaries of reality blur and the abyss is actively tampering with memories, it becomes increasingly difficult to discern which part of the Night Kingdom is real and which ones are twisted reflections of the past. Every conflicting cry about missing names, sacrifices, death, and timelines from years ago could be coming from those who fought and continue to fight even after losing their ancient names. The fire of heroes may still burn after death, but now it seems that the abyss is consuming these ancient names, causing unrest among those who inherited them from the surface. This ongoing struggle within the Night Kingdom against the abyss shows the depth of Natland's lore, where war, memory, and identity are all read by the abyss. Next, the statue of the Seven in Natland doesn't seem to bestow any pyro powers to the Traveler. Now, this could be due to the Night Kingdom being invaded by the Abyss, possibly tampering with the ancient name of the Pyro Sovereign, which is the only thing that could be tampered when it comes to statues of the Seven. So maybe the only likely way to restore this power is mentioned in the Ignition teaser and the trailer, forging the name of the one entombed in Primal Fire, Chbalanke, with colorful flowers representing fire and war, symbolizing Natland's blood. This journey on the sun-scorched sojourn might be the key to unlocking Natland's full potential once more. Now let's move on to Mavuika and Capitano and their clash between Pyro and Cryo. First off, her trailer weapon isn't actually her 5-star weapon. And it's also not the weapon that Kenich has, which is the Fang of the Mountain King. It's actually the upcoming Earthshaker 4-star weapon in the special program. Now, it's a common thing usually in trailers, but I just wanted to mention it regardless. Mavika is the current Archon of Natlan, known as the sun that never sets, with a queen-like personality that radiates passion and warmth, which may again mean that she is the pyro-sibling of Shbalanke. This mirrors Aztec and Mayan mythology of sun gods, and Mavika has led countless victories against the Abyss. Her power as an Archon is reflective of Natlan's devotion and is mentioned in previous lore about the faith of the people equating to the Archon's power. Her glowing hair, reminiscent of Pyro Slimes, suggests that she might be connected to the original powers of the dragons, not just as an Archon, but as a dragon herself. And that her role as an Archon involves not just leading her people, but maybe also making a sacrifice to remove the Abyss from the Night Kingdom. But because Mavuika seems like a phoenix, it's also likely that she'll be revived after her sacrifice. Capitano, on the other hand, is deeply involved in Natland's fire, war, and saving or even invading the Night Kingdom and Natland. His design shows scales of a dragon and dragon claws on his hands, but he also fabricates cryo equipment, similar to a cryo slime brandishing its own cryo shield, or maybe even child's hydro weapons. The fact that he doesn't get a heat stroke despite what he wears might also mean that he has a pyrovision or that he is a cryosaurian or maybe even a sovereign. His fight with Mavuika seems more than just taking the pyrognosis too. And it's not just about the Saritsa. It's as if he's trying to settle a score with her, which adds to why Mavuika and Capitano know each other from the Ignition teaser. If Capitano is a hero of Netland that lost his ancient name, it would mean that he did something long ago that would require dying and continuing even after death. 
His voice sounds similar to one of the heroes who united Natlan and the one who heard something. If he has that same voice, then he might be carrying the ancient name who faced the Black Turbid Tide long ago and creating the Mare Jivari, which could explain why he's hiding behind the mask and why he's so black now. But if we save the Night Kingdom, he may also redeem himself, which is a recurring tale of Natlan's past heroes. Then again, Capitano may also have a cryo delusion, even though Senora already had one first. His own ideals about Natlan's war and fire is also a reason for being here, and is the reason why he went to Natlan in the first place. So changing the rules of Natlan isn't just about Sneznaya and the Saritsa, as mentioned by Mawika. He has a score to settle with her, and it's going to change the course of Natlan's future regardless of who wins their duel. Regarding the concept of war and fire that both Capitano and Mawika are fighting for, I think that it's not just a war between who is stronger, but a clash of ideals, passions, and righteousness. With all the different regions that we've been to, all of them were described and played differently from their base definitions. And Natlan is no different, as it focuses on individual definitions of war, how they wish to fight, who they wish to fight, and what they are fighting for. The tournament won't be needing a pok-to-pok ball game that chooses its contenders if all that Natlan needed were powerful warriors. For Natlan to prosper, it must foster the people who are strong in both physical, mental, and emotional aspects. Which is why they need to connect their contending fire with the sacred flame of Natlan. Some extra lore about the tribes is that we might now have all six major tribes of Natlan mentioned in the special program. Kachina and Shilonen of the Nanatskayan Mining Children of Echoes, Molani and the Wayfinding Metzli People of the Springs, Kinich and the Huitzlan Scions of the Canopy, Chaska, a mediator between clans who comes from the Flower Feather clan, Yansen who is a mentor of the Pilgrimage of the Sacred Flame's Return, and a fitness instructor hailing from the Collective of Plenty, which might be the Fertile Lands based on Unfinished Reverie, and the last being Sitlali, a diviner from the Masters of the Nightwind tribe. Now, Natlan might have other tribes outside of the six major tribes, and one of them might be from the Flame Touch tribe, which was Vanessa's clan who left thousands of years ago. Now we still have no clue why Vanessa's tribe left and theories surrounding their departure range from exile, the abyss, the dragons, or even the tyrant of old Natlan who punished both people and the Saurians. And there we go, everything about the new 5.0 special program, Natlan Lore. Now there are already lots of theories on how Natlan is going to play out, along with the characters' lore and relations with each other. But I honestly think that reforging Shbalanke's name using the passion of Natlan's individual fires, as well as Mavuika sacrificing herself and then being reborn, is the most likely thing that's going to happen. But Natlan is just two weeks away so we can just wait and see, and more importantly, save up as much as we can before the release. So for now, that's it from me. I'll see you guys in the next video, yeah? Like, comment, if you enjoyed, subscribe, and hit the bell for more of my ramblings, and stay man theorists. Bye!